2023 was a great year for Cheesecake the One Pound Combat Robot, with three first place finishes across five tournaments, way better than my rookie season back in 2022. Now that it's 2024, Cheesecake is officially two years old, and he's ready to keep kicking butt at the next tournament hosted by the Garden State Combat Robotics League. Cheesecake's recent redesign is working very well so far, except for the mounts that hold my drive motors. The little plastic arms can still break sometimes, most recently in my test fight against Hypnovision, so I made new arms out of thin pieces of steel instead. I also noticed that the bushing on the end of my weapon motor was rubbing against the hub, creating friction and stealing energy from my weapon, so I raised up the bushing just a bit to create a nice gap and reduce the friction. With these finishing touches complete, Cheesecake was ready to compete. My first fight was the rematch that everyone wanted to see. Hypnovision was finally ready for a real tournament, and Cheesecake was ready for another shot at the full body shell spinner. This time around, I attached my small upside down wedge, the cake slice, to protect my weapon motor from Hypnovision's undercutting blade, along with a new attachment I designed, a kind of half cake slice which does the same job, but in a more modular way, which is great because I only had enough spare weight for one of them on the top of my chassis in case I got flipped over. I'm calling these little half wedges the cheeks because I'm running out of cake-related nouns. Let Aunt Gertrude pinch those chubby cheeks of yours! I hope she means my face! As always, the goal is to disable or destroy your opponent. A robot is disabled if it cannot move for a 10 second countdown. If both robots are still moving at the end of the time limit, then a winner is declared by a panel of judges, scoring based on the damage done to your opponent, the control you have over the fight, and the aggression you show in your engagements. Three, two, one, fight! So, Cheesecake versus Hitler versus Hitler. is uh, not spinning. Cheesecake uh, is still spinning. Cheesecake holding back. We're going to see if uh, Hitler Vision is uh, up for a hit. Let's around. There's another hit. Hitler Vision is still able to move. Shell spinners. They're totally to see chicken pots together. Dummy. A lot of respect. Oh, it's stuck in there. Oh, man. Like no. Cheesecake's weapon might be stuck in Hitler Vision. Well, that was a lame way to get stuck together. One unstick later and the fight continued. Three, two, one, resume! So there's Cheesecake's weapon back up. Looks like Hitler Disc can still move. That weapon from Hitler Disc still not Now that's what I like to see in a rematch. Hypnovision got up to speed fairly well, and he got a nice solid hit when I accidentally drove over him, but the cake slice was able to protect my weapon motor and allow me to get some good hits on Hypnovision's shell. One of these hits punched all the way through his shell, deforming it just enough to make it rub against his chassis and prevent it from spinning. Without his weapon, Hypnovision couldn't do much of anything. I really love Hypnovision's design, and I think it will get there eventually, but for now, Cheesecake gets the win. My next fight was against Phantom, a Viper kit with a vertical spinner. I've never actually fought a Viper Vert before, but the weapon sounds really scary in person. For this fight, I switched out the cake slice in favor of the Sweet Tooth, the flat fork I designed to slip under wedges and either flip them when my weapon bounces off the wedge, or hold me down so I can deliver a bigger hit. Three, two, one, fight! <laughs> That's a crooked looking sweet tooth. So, one hit from Cheesecake 
and this fight is all the same. The announcer couldn't see my weapon because it spins so quickly. That was pretty funny. Was that a tap? That's a tap out! Well, that worked, but the sweet tooth got really mangled, which is something I've never actually seen before. It might have collided with Phantom's weapon during that first big hit, I'm really not sure, but thankfully, that is the hit that flipped Phantom onto his head. Besides this first hit, there wasn't really any other big hit that disabled Phantom, but Cheesecake definitely took a few good bites out of him. After this fight, I gave my mangled sweet tooth to the other driver as a trophy, and continued on in the winner's bracket. My next fight was against a new and improved version of Lobot. He's still the wedgiest wedge bot, but now he has four-wheel drive and three sharp forks, so this was going to be a whole new challenge. Same strategy as before, though. Use the sweet tooth to keep myself on the ground when we collide. Just don't stare into his eyes for too long. It messes with your mind. Three, two... Dang it, Cheesecake, stop getting stuck. This unstick took quite a bit of effort, but eventually we got pulled apart and resumed the fight. Oh baby, that might be the most damage I've ever done to Lobot. I was able to rip off two of his wheels, puncture his wedge, and then rip the wedge almost completely off, exposing his battery and ending the fight. This was a very fun fight, and the other driver was kind enough to gift me Lobot's mangled wedge. I've actually wanted to take home a Lobot wedge for a long time, so this was very cool of the other driver. Cheesecake escaped mostly unscathed, but the massive hits against Lobot's forks left my weapon very dull and dented, so I replaced it after this fight. My next fight was a long overdue rematch against Dulce de Lucha. If Cheesecake has any particular rival, it is Dulce de Lucha. In our first two fights, Dulce de Lucha completely overwhelmed Cheesecake, but in our next two fights, Cheesecake dismantled Dulce de Lucha's wheels. This puts us at 2-2, two and two, so now it's time for a tiebreaker. This time around, Dulce de Lucha looks very different. The previous version was a mostly stock Candy Wasp Kit robot, 
but this new version is entirely custom, including his grade 5 titanium wedge and his claw-like titanium fork. One of these attachments is bound to have an effect on Cheesecake, so let's see what happens when these robots collide. Three, two, one, fight! Wasn't expecting that. Wow, I honestly did not expect that level of destruction. The old Dulce de Lucha took a lot of damage the last time we fought, but I really expected his new wedge to be a game changer. Oddly enough, it turned out that, while the wedge itself was impenetrable, its attachment point was very weak, so I was able to just yank it off with a good hit to the side. With half of his front missing, Dulce de Lucha couldn't protect his wheels, and Cheesecake pulled ahead with a third victory to Dulce de Lucha's two. With this victory over Dulce de Lucha, Cheesecake was, once again, heading into the finals with an undefeated record. This meant that Cheesecake's next fight would be against the winner of the loser's bracket in the grand final. The grand final this season is not double elimination, so this next fight really is winner take all. At this point in the tournament, the loser's bracket consisted of a baby nautiloid kit called Ipso Facto, a necessary evil kit called Bumblebee, and of course, Dulce de Lucha. It was getting late, and the loser's bracket fights were getting brutal, but the eventual winner of the loser's bracket was Dulce de Lucha, which meant that Cheesecake and Dulce de Lucha would get to square off one more time in a fight for first place. For this fight, Dulce de Lucha decided to double down on the one thing Cheesecake wasn't able to rip off, his big claw-like fork. Let's see if it works. Three, two, one, what? fight! Oh. 
I'm getting pushed all over. Questionably short pin, but okay. Oh, I couldn't get Cheesecake to point the right way. Ooh, that was a close one. Cheesecake got to Dulce de Lucha's wheels at the last minute, but not before Dulce de Lucha spent some time bullying Cheesecake around the box. And I also missed this golden opportunity when Dulce de Lucha got stuck in the wall. Because both robots were still moving at the end of the match, it went to a judge's decision. By unanimous decision, the winner was Dulce de Lucha. I was surprised by the results, but all three judges had the same scores. On each of their scorecards, Cheesecake was just one point behind Dulce de Lucha. If this had been an episode of BattleBots, Cheesecake almost certainly would have won, but the point system for these tournaments is not the same as on the BattleBots TV show. On BattleBots, a total of five points is awarded for damage, three for control, and three for aggression. However, at these tournaments, and even at NHRL, a total of six points is awarded for damage, another six points for control, and five for aggression. So in this final fight, the extra bit of control that Dulce de Lucha's forks provided, and my inability to engage during a few critical moments, was just enough for Dulce de Lucha to take the victory. Honestly, my biggest mistake was going after Dulce de Lucha's forks so much. I really wanted to rip them off, but I should have realized that this was not going to happen. Had I instead gone for his wheels earlier in the fight, I could have taken away his control and aggression. But I got greedy, so that's a hard lesson learned against a worthy opponent. And now the rivalry is all tied up again. Three wins for Cheesecake, three wins for Dulce de Lucha. With this final fight, Cheesecake was awarded second place, with a record of 4-1. and one. Even though I didn't win, this was a great way to start the year. Cheesecake never lost function, second place is very respectable, and I got to meet some awesome builders and some awesome fans. And if you're an awesome fan, Please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, or even a super thanks, and stay tuned for more Cheesecake.